And now for another yes dev, the, the thing where I say stuff and it's probably wrong, but that's okay because it's about video games and it'll get a ton of views. Uh, so I've, I've wanted to make one of these about marketing for a while. I mean, like I, I mentioned that before, before yes dev went away that at some point I would like to make a marketing thing once I figured out marketing. And I, I feel like, I feel like I've learned some stuff. But, you know, fair warning, I'm not an expert on marketing. I'm not sure if anyone is, though. So I'm going to try and explain what I feel I know. And that's probably the best you're ever going to get from bullshit about marketing. So basically, I would describe marketing as two unordered questions. So one question is, how are people going to learn about my product? And the other question is, what's going to make people talk about my product? And the reason I say these questions are unordered is because they both they both feed into each other with one or the other being more important, depending on, you know, what the current awareness level of your product is. Right. So most marketing guides you'll find are concerned with the first question. You know, how, how are people going to learn about my product? So I'm going to not dedicate that much time to that. But basically, the first question is. It's mostly concerned with what you're going to do when when you're the only one that knows about your product. So figuring out where people are, where eyeballs are, who controls the eyeballs. For video games right now, that's overwhelmingly Let's Players on YouTube, right? That should be fairly obvious. And those YouTubers might learn about games from being directly contacted, but probably not. Probably they learn it from like some gaming Reddit or forum or 4chan or some, um, you know, news website. So then it's, it's basically just trying to push your game into as many of those spaces as you can. And this is where Basically, every other marketing thing would stop. I mean, what else is there? You attack and attack and attack until something puts your game out there. And realistically, most of your attacks of trying to get the game out there are, is going to fail. It's, it's going to fail miserably. And it'll make you hate yourself and everyone around you. And is it me? Is it the game? Is it them? It, did, did they even open the email? I don't know. I can't answer that. I have no idea. But once something does click somewhere, there's going to be like a, a chain reaction, hopefully. And then it'll feel like, oh, it's, it's so easy. I just needed one thing to happen. And then all these other people learned about my game. That chain reaction boils down to the second question. What's going to make people talk about my product? What's going to make people talk about the game? And I think that that's what's really neglected in other guides on marketing. So what's going to make people talk? What's going to do that? Well, hopefully you will have this question in your mind from the very start of making your project. So sorry if you're already finished and you hadn't thought about this at all and you're trying at the last minute. Maybe, maybe you can pull something out, but it, it probably won't work. Ultimately, what the answer is, is bait. You got to bait everything put bait everywhere. So, so what I mean by that is, um, things that tickle the person's brains. So they'll want to talk about it, whether that has to do with like how it looks or what you're doing, externalities of the game, the trailer, the screenshots, how you contact people in those dumb emails. And so I'm not just leaving everything on you to figure out what the fuck bait is. I've come up with some general classifications for what is bait based on things that I've done, as well as things I've noticed from other games that have taken off, specifically ones that don't have tons of money behind them. Here's what I've come up with. We got um, mystery. So people, I think, tend to talk about what they don't know to try to figure it out. For example, No Man's Sky was a recent example of this with the entire core concept of the game being something that, like, it was visually very interesting, attracted people to it, and the concept seemed very open to everyone implanting their own ideas of what is possible, which almost comes to the point of bullshit, right? But it, it's mystery. Or it could be just an aspect of the game that has people confused, like a, a level that causes confusion. People play it and they, what the fuck am I supposed to do in this level? And they go and talk about it on a forum 
or with just, you know, some attention to detail, you can add in lots of little easy to miss extras so that people who find those things will be like really proud that they noticed this thing and they can show it off. But I would overall say that the concept of mystery is pretty difficult. I mean, if no one knows about the game in the first place, they don't know enough to care. So the other more blatant and outward sorts of baits uh, could be offensiveness. So I'm sure we all know the saying, there's no such thing as bad press, which probably not really true, but it's not completely false. So people just love to complain. That's everyone's favorite thing to do on the internet. Complaining about things that cause friction with their, with their morality or their ideas. And complaining is talking. So complaining about your game, it, it might not necessarily seem like a great thing at first, but better that some people hear about it in a negative context than never hear about it. And I'm sure you all know various examples of offensive games causing, you know, a storm of controversy and attention that comes along with it. Some people just lean right into the offensiveness, be offensive and be authentic that you're being offensive. And then a ton of people will hate you and the other people will, will love that you're at least authentic about it. It's kind of like saying, you know, you're an artist and you can do what you want. Every, every art form has their don't give a fuck, punk rock, who can get away with this stuff. So that's one approach. But you don't need to go that extreme because minor, even minor offenses get talked about. A, a lot of uh, game developers end up causing some, you know, offensive uproar without even trying. How dare you have a binary gender protagonist? So it's a good idea to think about those things while you're devving so that it isn't always blunders. You're not lucking into it. You can put little smatters of offensiveness in subtle ways into your game to encourage people to talk about it. The other obvious obvious bait is uh, eroticism. Sex sells, as they say, which is true and will always be true. Or at least eroticism in your game can get people sharing imagery about your game. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll actually be interested in buying the game, which concerns me, but it is uh, it is a valid way to get people interested and can pretty easily overlap with offensiveness thanks to Americans. My, my own moral backbone says probably don't force eroticism into what you're doing, let it form organically rather than it being just shoved in there. Another great bait to have in your game is humor. This is the cheat code to life. Unless you're dead inside, you enjoy humor. It's fairly well known that humorous things are the most shared things because people like feeling good and making other people feel good. So, so a lot of games are built from the ground up entirely for the concept of humor and um, they get a lot of attention because people enjoy smiling and laughing and being real humans. Most game developers, all game developers don't understand that. I don't understand that. Why are you smiling? Um, but you don't have to entirely develop the game around humor. You don't have to make a meme game. You can just have bits and pieces of humor and that will help spread it. Super hot, right? Had that Besides having a super cool concept, it had that, um, had like a meme tied into its story where the people who finished it would promote the game for them. Hell, if your game isn't even have any funniness in it and it's not trying to be funny, you could do what fucking like Ubisoft and Starbucks do include bugs. Um, Starbucks famously tells their staff to write people's names wrong. Lots of indie game developers, myself included, like showing off their their crazy bugs and they get shared because they're funny. Whoa, no one expected that to happen. What a crazy bug. Um, and then there's pain. Ooh, ooh, what a great bait pain is. You've probably noticed by now that all of these things that I'm talking about are sort of base emotions that you're trying to elicit in people. Because once people feel something, they gotta talk about it. Like, I, I feel, I feel kind of sweaty right now. Now, pain and sadness is probably not something you could lead with. I don't think you can really get pain 
and sadness and negative emotions into like your promotional images probably not i don't know maybe you're cleverer than me you can think of how to do that but pain sadness these are all really strong emotions that will create a connection a bond so if someone plays their game and they have negative emotions they're gonna want to talk the shit out of your game there's so many games you can probably think of where it wasn't a great emotion but it made you feel something and just like a movie or a TV show that did that to you, you can't get it out of your head and you're going to talk about it for the rest of your life. And that's that's great marketing. <laughs> so I would recommend that you maybe try and use a bit of everything to make people feel things, whether it's laughing or uh, an erection or just mad or curious about what the, what the heck that is. What is that? I don't understand. And that will hopefully re result in a, a game that has lots of little baits and hooks coming out of every orifice of the game so that when you push it out into the world, something, anything grabs on and starts creating a self-sustaining marketing organism.